Today I will show you how to change the impeller on a 6 horsepower of Vinrood outboard motor, produced from 1965 to 1979 with some modifications. The same motor was also produced and sold as a Johnson 6 horsepower. The difference lies in the engine's tray and cover. All other parts are identical. This is one of the most robust and reliable motors ever made. Please note the fact that most motors from this era have an almost identical method for changing the impeller, as well as in the design of the parts. The difference is only in their size, which increases with horsepower. Here are the motors that have an almost identical method for changing the impeller, 5.5, 5, 9.5, 10, 16, 18, 20, 25, and 33 horsepower as well in others. Before removing the lower unit, you must unscrew the four bolts holding it in place. Then shift into forward gear and pull the lower unit down. This will give you access to the brass connector bolt that holds the shifting mechanism. On some motors, the lower unit drops down enough to provide the necessary space to unscrew it. In this case, it doesn't, and as you can see, access is limited. Naturally, over the years, this impeller has been replaced at least a few times, which suggests that there might be surprises. In this case, the bolt is very tightly fastened, which is unnecessary. Often over-tightening bolt damages the thread of the brass connector. If this is the case during the assembly, it needs to be replaced with a longer stainless steel bolt with lock washer, along with a nut on the other side of the brass connector, to ensure normal operation. This is the only way to give a second life to the damaged connector and save money. Once you've removed the lower unit, you can place it on a pre-made stand. In this case, I'm using my old stand, but if you want to see an improved version, you can follow the link from the top right corner or the description. The first thing you need to do is remove the pin located at the top end of the shaft. This pin holds a spring and a seal, which prevent water from entering between the shaft and the crankshaft. In this model, the seal and spring always remain in the boot of the outboard motor when the lower unit is removed. Sometimes this pin can be rusted or damaged and may need to be drilled out and replaced with a new one. After removing it, unscrew the four bolts holding the impeller housing and pull it up. Ensure that the seal that directs water to the engine is in good condition and reusable. If necessary, replace it with a new one. As you can see, in this case, the impeller has lost its memory and is in a bent position. The good news is that all the blades are intact and haven't broken into pieces. If that had happened, rubber pieces could clog the cooling system. In most cases, you can find them near the thermostat. Remove the impeller and discard it, you won't need it anymore. The pin I'm removing and installing is a very important part. It prevents the impeller from spinning freely around the shaft, but to moves with it. If you lose it, you can cut from the back of a drill bit of the appropriate size and modify the motor by installing the new part. The different shape shouldn't worry you, what's important is the correct length and that it doesn't fall out of the impeller. Lightly grease the impeller and place it on the shaft. If you apply too much grease, you could clog the cooling system or attract sand. The sand will act as a grinder and will worn out the impeller quickly. This applies to any outboard regardless of make, model, and horsepower. Make sure the pin is in its designated spot by checking. The impeller should move with the shaft. Clean the housing and place it on the shaft. No silicone or gasket is needed here. Use self-locking pliers to grip the splines on the shaft. Turn clockwise and gently press the impeller housing until it fully seats. This will align the impeller blades correctly. Turning counterclockwise will cause the blades to face the wrong way and won't pump water. Tighten the four bolts and then using the pliers check how the shaft moves. It should move with some resistance but not with excessive effort.
Then you can perform the following test to ensure the impeller pumps water. The test isn't mandatory, but is recommended. In this case, I'll demonstrate with another lower unit I have recorded. As you see I have clamped the shaft in an electric drill. The shaft's rotation direction is always to the right. If you accidentally reverse the direction, you risk some of the impeller blades facing the wrong way and not being able to pump water. Even if you correct the direction back to right, they will never realign properly. Ensure the lower unit is disengaged on neutral gear and hold it as high as possible, keeping your hands away from the propeller. Now you can perform the test. Submerge it deep enough to draw water and test. The pumped water should have a good flow as in this case. When disassembling the drill, be careful not to turn the shaft to the left as this will reverse the impeller blades. Reinstall the pin on the shaft and grease the shaft. This will protect it from water that will inevitably penetrate and cause rust, which could stuck the shafted in the crankshaft. Greasing applies to all brands and models of outboard motors, such as Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, Mercury, Johnson, Avinrude, and many others. Place the lower unit back on the motor in reverse order. As you see, it's not that difficult, and almost anyone can do it, saving you a three-digit repair bill from a professional shop. Often I'm asked when to replace the impeller. If the engine stays constantly on the boat and is exposed to intense sunlight with regular temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius, it is recommended to replace it annually. The reason is that the rubber bakes and dries out. If the motor is stored in the shade or a garage, you can replace it every two years. In both cases, it is recommended to periodically pull the recoil starter to change the position of the impeller blades so they don't lose memory. When turning the flywheel by hand, remember to turn only to the right, otherwise, you risk reversing the impeller blades. If you want to learn how to clean and rebuild the carburetor of your outboard motor, or to learn the symptoms of a damaged fuel pump as well as the ignition system, please subscribe to the Boat Motors channel and support us with a like, and watch the videos I have made for you. On this channel, we also feature restorations of classic and vintage cars, and we plan to present other interesting video clips about classic cars. The channel broadcasts in seven of the most popular languages, English, Spanish, French, Italian, German, Russian, and Portuguese. You should note that none of these languages are my native language, so I apologize in advance for any possible translation and pronunciation errors, as well as for the synchronization of the video with the text. Thank you for your understanding. Unfortunately, all other languages will have to continue using automated YouTube translation. Along with all these innovations, in the top left corner of the thumbnails, I'll place the flag corresponding to the language, as well as the text in the respective language. This will make it easier to find the new episode and simultaneously publish seven video clips. For now, creating multilingual versions will be in an experimental period, hoping this will become standard on the channel, but for this, I need your support and comments. If you enjoyed a video, please give it a thumbs up, this will help the channel's development. Thank you for watching the video. I wish you success in all your projects.